I think this bench table is kind of familiar, isn't it? Let's turn it on. So right here we have a bench table and right here we have thermal paste, thermal pads and liquid metal. And today you'll be able to see all of these paired up. Well, basically not paired up, but uh, compared to that thermal paste war that I did um, a couple of weeks, mon months, I think it was more months than weeks actually. And I used the same bench table, uh, except for the GPU. The GPU is different, but I think that is totally relevant. We have AMD Ryzen 9 7900X3D. Uh, we have the Inwin MR36, since I used the cooling and this processor in that uh, scenario. Of course, I have to repeat to actually have something to compare. And we have Kingston Fury. Uh, Renegade uh, DDR5 RGB at, uh, at uh, 6400 MHz. So these are 2 times 16. That's it. Everything is basically the same. So yeah, kind of interesting. So what's this? We have Thermal Hero Thermal Paste, Thermal Pads, and we have Thermal Hero Liquid Metal. So we start with Neo, then we have Quantum, then we have Thermal Pads that uh, range from 0 0.5 to 3 millimeters. And of course, we have Thermal Hero Metallic, basically, you know what that stands for. So we have two, four, six, six additional parts that I will add into that spreadsheet, uh, into that graph, into those graphs. And to give you some idea how Thermal Hero actually goes into that segment. So let's start. We have Neo, which is a thermal paste, as well as the Quantum and Ultra. And then we have two thermal pads, 0 0.5 and 2 millimeters. And we have the liquid metal metallic, uh, which you already know everything about it. The only thing that from out of all of this is a bit strange is the thermal pads. And I'm not saying this in terms of some, de not degradation, but some, I don't know. The thing what is strange is that on the box, it says all CPUs and GPUs. And I know thermal pads aren't that. It's not a thermal pad, it's a thermal sheet that makes more sense than a thermal pad because, well, thermal pads go on VRMs, thermal pads go on MOSFETs and similar stuff. And uh, this is kind of awkward, but I actually did place them on the CPU just for the sake to have some thermals and I didn't expect it uh, to even go high as it um, did, but okay. Regardless of that, we have some information about that. So what I would suggest if you're going with some easy approach, go with thermal sheet, not with the thermal pad and uh, definitely go with a uh, paste or liquid metal. If you think you can manage that without uh, spilling the liquid metal on your socket or anywhere that can make a contact because it is electrically conductive. As I did last time, I'll just go quickly through some specs and uh, the same way I did last time, I'll do the same thing. Uh, today, I'm not going to go with viscosity and thermal conductivity uh, because, well, you know what I mentioned last time. So we have the Thermal Hero Neo, this is a light gray thermal paste with weight from 1 to 50 grams, so you can choose whatever you wish. Density is 2.8 grams per cubic centimeter and the operating temperature is from minus 50 to 220 degrees. Then we have Thermal Hero Quantum Thermal Paste, weight is from 1 to 25 grams. Density is 3.5 grams per cubic centimeter. Operating temperature is from minus 75 to 300 Celsius degrees. And when we're talking about the color, it's actually more on the dark side, dark, dark grayish, I would say. And the same color actually goes for the Thermal Hero Ultra. Now, the weight from 1 to 25 grams, density 3.45 grams per cubic centimeter, and operating temperature is from minus 50 to 300 degrees Celsius. For the Thermal Pad Neo series, thickness goes from 0 0.5 to 3 millimeters, what I stated, and the size goes from 50 times 50 to 100 times 100. Uh, I'm not going to go with the, the other thickness because it's all the same, but we have the liquid metal. So, Thermal Hero Metallic uh, from 1 to 5 gram of weight, we have 6.4 grams per cubic centimeter and operating temperature is 550 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna start with the easy ones, basically thermal paste, right? 
In Ada 64 Extreme Edition CPU went up to 91 degrees and the clock speed went up to 4725 MHz. Now if we compare it to the table that I have, 91 degrees goes somewhere between Fantex PH and DC and uh, Cooler Master Master Gel Pro and right before Inwin the no name one that I had which has the same thermals and the same clock speed. But then we go with uh, Cinebench and that uh, 10 minute uh, pass. We have uh, 26,148 Cinebench points, 86 degrees on uh, average, 20 passes with 4950 megahertz uh, clock speed, which brings us to the point that goes much better than the NZXT high performance thermal paste because that one had 26,069. But uh, when you compare it, it's quite, uh, well, 100 Cinebench points difference between the Inwin no name. So it's somewhere there and we have, um, well, basically I said that 4950 uh, 4, megahertz. Then next in line, we have the Quantum one. Now, here's an interesting thing. You do get a quite nice boost when we're talking about uh, performance and everything all together. So 89 degrees in AIDA 64, we're having clock speed at 4750, which brings us to the point that it's somewhere even better than Arctic MX4, but it goes into the same bucket as Deepcool DM9 and almost quite close to the MX6 because it has the same thermals as MX6, but the MX6 had much better clock speed when we're talking about this processor. And then we go to uh, Cinebench, uh, 84 degrees uh, on the average, which does sound quite nice. 49.75 clock speed, uh, 21 pass, and we're having 26,371. It goes right after Cooler Master Master Gel Pro and right before Arctic MX4. But if we continue further, now it gets interesting as I go further, we have the Ultra one. Uh, AIDA 64 Extreme Edition actually has the same results as the Quantum. So 89 degrees on the CPU and clock speed 4750. Actually, the only difference is that the Ultra didn't go with 20 passes, 21 passes like Quantum did. So this is quite interesting. Yeah. Now, Neo Series 0.5, this we're talking about the thickness of the thermal pad. This is... Uh, as I expected, 4675 with the thermals of 91 and 18 passes. Uh, I don't even have to mention the average score. It was somewhere around 2400, 24,000, uh, almost touching uh, 25,000, 24,900, something like that. So yeah, and uh, the same thing and maybe even worse because of the thickness because as I said and as I thought, thermal pads aren't good for processors, VRMs, MOSFETs, this is the way to use. This is the application where you should use thermal pads. But regardless of that, it says here for any CPU or GPU, so I did that. Neo Series 2.0, that means uh, 2 millimeters of thickness. We're having AIDA uh, 90 degrees with 2700 MHz uh, and I forgot to mention the 0 0.5 one. We're having 91 degrees with 4125. Cinebench uh, 90 degrees, uh, 16 passes, but uh, 4250 megahertz clock speed. Final Cinebench points 22,690, something like that. So yeah. But then we go to liquid metal. So we have the metallic one and uh, CPU went up to 87 degrees in AIDA 64 Extreme Edition with 4825 megahertz clock speed. And that goes right after Noctua NTH2, but uh, right before or somewhere in the middle, I would say quite nice mid Noctua NTH2 and Thermal Grizzly Conductor Out Extreme. Now, this would be okay if this was a regular thermal paste but we're talking about liquid metal. So yeah, this goes into that segment. And then we go Cinebench. We have 83 degrees with 5,000 clock speed and uh, the Cinebench was 26,479 with 21 pass. So we're having somewhere in between Noctua NTH1 and Deepcool DM9. What I can say is that I 
did the benchmarks the same way I did last time. Ida 64 Extreme Edition, 30 minutes, uh, average of everything. And of course, the Cinebench had that um, 10 minute run without stopping to check out the passes, to check out the final score at the end. And of course, the average of the clock speed and the average of the thermals. So this is where these stack up. I would say that the Quantum and Ultra are quite solid. These are quite impressive and I do have to say uh, in terms of, um, well, in terms of cooling, in terms of performance and everything that I got from this CPU with these two, it was, I think these are two Quantum, yeah, and this is Ultra. Oh wow, I guessed it. So these two are quite solid. Thumbs up for these. Uh, I can't give it a performance badge because um, what I can say is we have the performance badges for others that I reviewed uh, in that uh, Thermal Paste War. But I could give it, when we compare with all of these and some of the others, I could give it the PC Crazy Approves badge just because they did that mid-range or even higher, which is still good. So just approved, no performance. And when we're talking about Neo, this is something that, I don't know, it's, it's solid, it's better than your no name or anything similar to that, like the NZXT one that was really terrible and similar stuff. But when you take into consideration thermal pads, definitely don't use them on your processors or GPUs in terms of actually placing them on the core, which is kind of obvious. Use them for VRMs, MOSFETs. I don't know, water cooling when you go with uh, specific uh, GPU blocks, use those if they don't have or if you're reusing the if you're reusing the water block and your original uh, thermal pads are just uh, off that's it uh, guys uh, I'll put I'll place the links in the description below so you can check out the prices and, and everything but if I go and compare and pick my favorite I would definitely go with the ultra because this one is almost twice as cheaper as the quantum and it's still cheaper than the Noctua NTH2. This one is actually uh, priced uh, higher. So yeah, this one is, I think what I saw on Amazon, this uh, Quantum one is 2490 and this one is 990. And the uh, Neo one is, I think around five, but I'll place the links in the description so you can check out the actual price tags uh, at the current state if there's no discount or something similar to that. But yeah, all in all, I think these these two did outstandingly good i would expect a bit more from quantum just because of the price tag but yeah the ultra one did quite nice so guys that's all for today thanks for watching thanks for sticking by another a bit longer video for thermal paste and um, addition to my past video and uh, that'll be all for today guys if you like the video if this helped you don't forget to subscribe hit the like button click the notification bell Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.